Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And a new card using some just released products from Honeybee Stamps. Their most recent release um, was delayed because where they're based in Oregon and they had horrible weather there. Was it a couple weeks ago? Recently. Anyway, the release was delayed. And now it's available. I will have a link to it in the description box below the video. I haven't yet done a release and review. It's on the list. It's on the list. Hopefully I'll get to it. But I made a card with some of it. And I absolutely... Oh, this is the Bold Backgrounds Vintage Roses. Like it's a big... Like it's as big as my head. Big wafer die set. This cuts like an A2 panel. It's very sort of lovely layers, which... If you aren't familiar, Honey Bee has many lovely layers wafer die sets. They started coming with them, I don't even know how many years ago now. I do have an entire playlist on my YouTube channel. I'll hopefully remember to link to it at in the end screen. Um, because yeah, there's just there's so many. They're so good. Favorites, love. This is similar to that. So you just create this gorgeous background and it fits an entire A2 card. So I did a almost transparent card front with this and I did ink blending and layered these up and I had a lot of fun making it and I'm just, I'm really happy with how this turned out. So, <laughs> like I said, I'll have a link to the release in the description box below and then of course my supply list, links to everything, blog posts, social media, all the things in the description box below and then just keep watching and I'll show you guys how I made this card. This is what I mean. This way for die sets. Just gorgeous. Gorgeous. So I die cut some green cardstock. This is Concord 9th Avocado. So I die cut the like the main panel from the cardstock. And like I said, this is A2 sized. Cuts all at once. And I'm not sure how well it's hard to tell when I'm editing because my my like actual visual here is, is very small. But it has all of that gorgeous debossing detail on all the leaves. Obviously where the florals go, which is, it's pretty obvious where those spots are. Um, they're just flat. They're, they're, place, they're placements, you know, for the actual die cut blooms, which we'll get to in a minute. So I die cut it from green cardstock. And then I stuck it to my grip mat and did some ink blending. Just simple ink blending. And this right now looks much, much more darker, much much more intense, a little messy, you know, one parts of it are going to get covered up. So I'm not worried about any ink getting on those like floral areas because they'll get covered up. And these inks, which are all Concord and Ninth inks that I'm using today, these, and I've mentioned this in other videos, these behave in the same way that Simon Says Stamps positively saturated inks do in that as they as they dry and and absorb into the cardstock they they dry back so they soften and they smooth out so i have really been loving these and the simon ones to do things like this to just add that shading and depth and not worry about it so much <laughs> like I, I just slap the color on and, and it just it does its own magic especially on top of like the similar you know color cardstocks it doesn't have to be the exact like this exact shade of green but you know putting green inks on green cardstock it just as it's you know soaks in and smooths out it's it saves me all the time and effort and I love it so I blended two shades on there and I was using little waffle flower brushes which I use throughout this as well I used avocado and artichoke inks for that background and then for the florals um there is a layering guide on the honeybee site that you can um, print and download. Sometimes they're included with the die sets. It depends because I get things like earlier, earlier than the, the average public, you know, because I'm on the Honeybee design team. Sometimes I get the layering guides with the packaging. Sometimes I don't, but I downloaded mine just to make sure I was doing things right. Because with this set, you need to die cut things multiple times. So you need, and it's all explained and done, which again, I love the less thinking I have to do, the better. So you need two sets for the large rows, three of the medium and three of the small. That's it. Super simple. So I did all my die cutting and this I just die cut 
scraps of smooth white cardstock. I could have gone with like a, a yellow cardstock and blended on that as well. That would have looked just fabulous. But I decided to just go with white and stuck all the pieces, had them all lined up in the kind of basically in the order they're going to get um, adhered because that helps me visually as well as I'm blending my inks. And the only parts I'm, I'm, I'm not worried about them, but the only parts I'm making sure that I get, you know, just a nice little blend are the parts with the debossing because these are very similar. They're made by the same brand, but I've talked about this with the like lovely layer sets is they're very simple to um, assemble. You know, they, they look a little crazy, you know, all these random pieces. It's like, what? But the minute you start trying to assemble them, it just, it makes sense. You basically, like always, go largest to smallest. There's little like visual points. And then the big thing to always remember is with these, especially, is they're all the debossed areas are the areas that are going to show. So that's why I'm literally like slapping ink on like some of the centers, not blending like it's just a hot mess because those are all the smooth areas. They're going to get covered up by the layer that gets adhered on top of it. So there is no point in wasting any time trying to make those spots like look nice because you're not going to see them. So I just concentrated on all the detail areas and I used three different shades of ink. I started with Buttercup and then I went in with Sweet Pea. So with the buttercup, I did more kind of all over really. And then the sweet pea, I was kind of dragging it from the tops of the petals down. And then my final color is uh, Concord Nine's dragon fruit, which this one I use a very, very light hand because this is a very intense pink. Oh, I love it. I love it. But it's very intense. <laughs> so I was like, just, just a little bit. I just wanted it kind of on the edges there, you know, and same thing. These will smooth out even more as they dry and they'll be fabulous and then for the little pieces that are going to be the flower centers for the medium and large i just used uh, nutmeg ink and once i got all the blending done it's time to start assembling so for the buds i blended them with the colors this piece that i'm adhering right now that goes on top you could do that in the greens and make it more like a, a little, little tiny bud you know but i just did it with the pinks and yellows because i was like that's just what i wanted to do so it worked for me. <laughs> so I did that. The medium one, same thing. You go largest to smallest. There's the three pieces. Super duper simple. Um, the only little like extra step I decided to take was after adhering this third piece, I went in with my teeny tiny little blender brush. That's the Waffle Flower uh, Zero Plus. And um, again, just a very light amount of that dragon fruit ink and just pulled it in. You can see right at the top of that front petal on either side. It just created a little bit of separation. A person could totally skip this step, but I was just, it. I just needed to do it. It was bucking me. So I did that with all of them. So I adhered those together. The flower center just fits right in there. And then with the larger, the largest one, same thing. You just go largest to smallest. Everything just kind of makes sense. Um, the only extra with this one is there's those little wavy, tiny sort of narrow pieces. Those just go along the edges of the petals to give that, you know, illusion of it, the petal curling over that sort of thing. You could always skip adhering those if you don't want to. Um, but again, it's one of those things where it's like you assemble it once and it's like, oh, th this makes perfect sense. It just, it all comes together. Looks fabulous. Love it. So I used my little reverse tweezers to hold these pieces while I was adding um, glue to them and yeah it's just it just helps plus it was helping me get it off get them up off the grip mat so I would just add little bits of glue stick them into place as you can see there I had purposely blended those two pieces with just kind of a lighter hand with the pinks so that you could really see that as once I adhered them on top of this um, floral and the thing I was liking about this as I was putting these together I was like ooh, these could be fun to use just on their own like without the background, I was like, oh, yeah, ideas. I need more hours in the day. I need more days in the week. I would like an extra month in the year. You know, I, I'm adding to my, my wish list of extra time. But anyway, got everything adhered and then um, adhered them to the background, which again, it's blatantly obvious where they go. They just fit into place because the shapes just fit. It just works. And once they get adhered to the background and it's all come together, it's just like, this is 
so pretty. I, uh, I love it. I love it. So I just, and I just sat there and I was like, I don't, I don't even want to make a card with this. I just, I just want to keep it. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, I've already, I've got the set. I can, I can make more, you know? So I adhered all of the, the florals and the buds. And it's technically like, as it is right now, it's upside down, but that's kind of the beauty of it. You can do either way, you know, or you could do it landscape. Like it really doesn't matter. And I was like, oh, that's kind of fun too. So I got all the little pieces adhered and then of course splatter one out. Of course it did. So I stuck it in my splat box and I'm using um, my current little favorite, but like I've been saying, you can also use, which I've shown in a million videos, uh, Ranger Perfect Pearl Powder mixed with a bit of water. But this is the Picket Fence uh, Paper Splatter Watercolor in Liquid White Snowflake. So I shook it up really well, put it on my palette use my fan brush, splattered this on the background. So it's just going to give it that shimmer, Ugh, love, love, and then let that dry. So the um, fancy thing I did for this card, while I was doing this, I was like, this is like the perfect dye, like wafer dye to do like a transparent card front with. And that's what I was aiming for. But I was going through my vellum and I was like, oh, I haven't used this shimmery like pearlescent vellum in a while. And that one. So it's not, my card front in the end isn't going to be like transparent like I intended, but I don't care because this vellum's gorgeous. This is Lawn Fawn's Pearlescent Vellum. Again, used this in many videos over the years. It'll be linked with the supplies. I didn't check to see if it was in stock before I posted this, but it'll get restocked if it's not. It, it is one of my favorites. It's just gorgeous. So I cut a piece to four and a quarter by about a little over six inches because you just you want a, a flap at the top to be able to adhere this to a card base and then I carefully scored it at five and a half so it's four and a quarter by five and a half and reinforce that little fold and then decided that I wanted to adhere the background like the proper way just because of where I wanted to place my sentiment and flipped over the background and applied just little globs of craft tacky glue all over this 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 took a minute not that long but it took a minute and then I'm going to adhere it to the vellum. And it was just easier to take the vellum and press it in. Now, doesn't matter what type of vellum, and I don't care what anyone says, adhesive shows through vellum. It just does. I just, it it's the nature of the product. I generally don't care, depending on what I'm doing, you know, and, the, and there's ways to hide it. With something like this, you can see the adhesive and it's ugly. If it doesn't bother you, great. It's fine. With this, I was like, eh, no, we don't want to. We don't want to open the card and be like, what is all this squiggly stuff, you know? So all I did was just die cut a, li a lightweight piece of white cardstock with the background wafer dye, applied adhesive to the front of it. See, there you can see, that's what you see. Just ugly, you know? Adhered it. That's it. Simple. Covers it right up. Plus it does give, because vellum is not as heavyweight as cardstock, it gives it a little extra um, strength. So I adhered them together, stuck them under a couple of my great big acrylic blocks and let that adhesive dry. And then I kept everything else simple because obviously the focus is these beautiful die cuts. And I'm using the um, Honeybee Mailbox Memos stamp set for my sentiments. I stamped one sentiment onto just a scrap of smooth white cardstock. And I'm using the, I think I used the artichoke ink for the sentiments. And then I took another panel of even lighter weight, the same lightweight white cardstock I used on the back of this vellum piece and stamped another sentiment onto that. And then I have two pieces of that same green cardstock that are A2 sized. And I'm using liquid adhesive for this. You could, I was going to use like score tape to adhere this to the panel because you know it's good strong adhesive, but so is liquid adhesive. And with this, I actually prefer liquid adhesive because it gave me, you know, time to wiggle that background around to make sure it was actually lined up. You know, that's, that's why I like my liquid glue. I need that wiggle room because otherwise I'm just, it's a mess. It's a mess. So I adhered the flap to the back of that first green piece. And then I adhered the second one to completely cover that up. So now it's all seamless. You know, I've got, that's my card base and then the card front is the vellum piece with the die cuts on it. And then I took the piece of white cardstock that I stamped that was trimmed down to like four by five and a quarter, just slightly smaller than A2 
um, card. And I adhered that to the inside. And this was the nice thing too about using this pearlescent vellum and it not being super see-through is what I stamped on the inside, etc. isn't super obvious. So again, I don't overly care, but I've shown in other videos in the past, I don't do cards like this very often, but doing it like a trifold card, you know, if you really want to hide the inside, depending on how you do, you know, the front transparency, etc. But for this, it just worked. So then I die cut the sending smile sentiment with the coordinating wafer die. And then I carefully adhered it. I put, you saw, I just put adhesive here and there on the leaves because again, didn't want the adhesive on that vellum because it would have immediately shown through and just looked ugly. So then as a final bit of embellishment, I added some of the Honeybee Vintage Love gem stickers because there were some pink and yellow ones in there, which were perfect. So pop those into place and that finished off this card. So it's kind of transparent, but not really. But for me, the shimmer on the vellum just makes it. And this die cut, it didn't need anything else, honestly. Like, it's just gorgeous. Love it. So like I mentioned in the intro, I will have a link to the new release. I'll have a link to all the supplies I use. They'll all be listed and linked in the description box below. I'll also, of course, link to my blog post. In the blog post, it's visual. I got the photos. I got picture links, all the things. So you can check that out in the description box below the video if you're interested. And then at the very end, I'll link to that playlist I mentioned as well. And yeah, thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping, commenting, subscribe if you haven't. I'd love to have you. And I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.